My guest today is Javier Thalmeron. Javier, how are you, sir? Uh, hello, thank you for having me here. Hello, oh, thank you. Uh, tell us, what do you do for a living, Javier? So I'm I'm a, a staff engineer from the for the Binami team, the content team inside uh, the Binami project, which was part of VMware, and then now it's part of Broadcom. So I'm uh, specializing in packaging up open source applications and making them available for everyone with very simple commands. And my my full work currently is especially focused on Kubernetes applications, on trying to make as many open source applications available in, in container and Kubernetes. Okay, yeah, I, I this is great that I'm talking to you because that's uh, I, I am familiar with Kubernetes, but I'm not very familiar with Bitnami. Can you tell us what that is? So Binami is a very long running project and its aim was to, I remember the, the initial uh, motto was to make op uh, awesome open source software available for everyone. I so the idea Sounds was like a to, noble goal. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. So the idea was to, to take all major open source applications, you name it, for example, uh, MySQL, MariaDB, Postgres, Redis, MongoDB, WordPress, a, a wide variety of applications and make it available in as many possible formats as possible. So for example, installing it in your own laptop to have it as OVA to can run with virtualization software as cloud images and now also containers and Kubernetes uh, via Helm charts. So you, you, can, you can deploy any kind of open source application in, in whatever platform you, you want. So we, right now we... Right now we have like, I think it's about more than 200 applications and components that are available in the catalog. It's a fully open source catalog that, that people can just uh, easily access in all cloud providers. And also in, in as I said, in their, in on-premise, in, the, in their own platforms. Oh, okay. So the idea is that you would uh, write your code for whatever application or service you wanted to build, and then through some configuration, then Bitnami would allow you to package it up so that uh, I could run that same code locally in the cloud, as in a in a in a, inside of a container, whatever I want to do. The idea will be most uh, packing your own application. It will be to provide you with building blocks for your application. For example, if you're writing a Go application and you require a database backend, like for example, Postgres, uh, you don't have to go through the struggle of installing and configuring your Postgres application on your own. You will just run a simple command like helm install okay. Postgres and you, and you already have the building block. So you can okay. easily uh, build your applications and just focus on the application code and you will, have, you will be able to, to have the rest of the elements easily configured. And you can have your application running in no time, which is something oh, nice. like, which is something that application developers uh, really need because, in the end, it's uh, they want to use open source software, they want to use the the latest versions, they want to deploy fast. So that's what we're trying to help in this in this way. And you have a lot of open source projects that are currently using uh, Bitnami components as part of the. Of their other application, so for example, I can name Apache Airflow, Apache Superset, uh, and much more, much more. I if you just Google in GitHub, if you just search in GitHub, Bitnami, you will see a lot of references and a lot of open source projects. Hmm, okay, uh, so Bitnami, this uh, there's a little bit of a complicated evolution of Bitnami in terms of ownership, right? It's still an open source project, but it it's, was acquired. It by VMware, which was then acquired by Broadcom. Is that help? We'll That's talk correct. A about the history there. <laughs> yeah, so yeah, it's, it's, it's been a long trip. So yeah, first, it's always been an open source project. And so far it's always been, you have a lot of, uh, you have all these components easy, uh, free to use. Mm -hmm. And so you, you, users don't get charged from that. And, we, and in the past, what we will do is to, uh, populate all major cloud marketplaces with our con with our with our pro uh, with our components like Postgres or MariaDB. The idea will be we will not charge users, but 
the cloud providers will pay us. So in the end, so it's like a, in a way uh, that a Vietnami working in its initial history. Now, after the acquisition of VMware and now with Broadcom, we we also uh, shifted to to have a together with the open source that that all people know. Now we also have an enterprise version of this Vietnami catalog, which is called the Tanz Application Catalog. Hmm. So this is how it currently what we have. And the idea in the end is to, it's true that, that a lot of users and developers especially love all the Vietnami components because of it easy, because it's very easy to use and they can deploy. But there is a point where you also where you need to go to the to the enterprise and there you don't only have developers which are focused on these items that I mentioned before. You have uh, also applic- uh, application platform operators that have very different needs in this sense. While, for example, a user wants to have the latest version of the database that supports, I don't know, all the latest features, like, for example, encryption, you have uh, platform operators that want to have control of all the software that is being deployed in the infrastructure. They want to have full control of the licenses of the components that are being deployed. They want to know the vulnerabilities that all the components have, the, the versions, uh, all the list of components that a container has, uh, what is known as the software bill of materials. They want to have uh, compliance and they want, they want to ensure that all the security requirements are met. So this is something that uh, from a developer perspective, uh, when I have to deal with that part, for example, I don't know, ensuring that my database uh, has all the, I think it's called, yeah, STIG standard, all the security, passes all the security checklist. I can tell you that this is a very, very painful process where you have to go check sure. by check, uh, ensuring that everything is is working. And uh, you know, there's all the features, security features have been enabled. So it's something very different uh, compared to what a developer does. So this enterprise uh, catalog is especially meant for these kind of uh, environments where you can, apart from having all the applications your developers need, they also uh, meet all their compliance requirements. They know the licenses of, that, are be, that, that are in place. They know exactly all the, all the security vulnerabilities and the poss- um, if there are any. They know they can select their own hardened operating system uh, that they can build their catalog on top of that, on top, on top of. So for, because of open source co- uh, a catalog is only only uses Debian so right now, but in another co- you can go to an enterprise and they will say, okay, it's, uh, Debian is nice, but we are using Red Hat in in house, so we cannot uh, we have these the these restrictions that we cannot use Debian, so we can't use Vietnami. There you have, for example, Tansu that you can use the same catalog that we have in open source. You have it uh, in this flavor, so you can comply with everything you. You, you have uh, you, your company needs, and of course, all this control of the software you, you, you have on the cluster. So, if for example, some drama like the I don't know if you remember this lock for shell uh, security issue that happened, could it be like some years ago? There was a Java component that had a vulnerability, and um, <laughs> all major Java applications were potentially uh, vulnerable. Mm-hmm. And this, this was a huge drama over all the ha- Java landscape, and a lot of uh, applications have to uh, quickly upgrade. Many many uh, companies didn't know if the, if they were affected or not. So that's why also we try to provide with all the uh, software bureau materials, all the components that are, that are running your cluster. So you, if there is some, this kind of vulnerabilities, you easily know where or which components are affected. So it's it, you reduce the headache. That that these kind of situations uh, occur uh, when these kind of situations happen, you can uh, make your life easier for app platforms, as well as having developers happy. 
Uh, happy developers are a good thing. Absolutely. <laughs> so if I understand this correctly, Bitnami is still an open source project. It's still free. You can totally use it. It's yeah. it's kind of sponsored by uh, Broadcom now, but uh, that's almost irrelevant to the folks that are using it. They just, uh, um, they can use it. However, if you, if you want to, these extra features, then there's a commercial product, Tanzu Application Pro Catalog. And that yes. provides you these, these cross-cutting concerns that you talked about, security, compliance, uh, testing for vulnerabilities, controlling the licenses of the dependencies that are in there. That's, that's the value that you're paying for when you get this Tanzu application catalog. Is that, have I summarized that properly? Perfect, yes. Okay, and, and is, uh, I've, 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 I've worked with Tanzu a couple times in the past, just a little bit. Uh, is the cap application catalog just part of Tanzu or is it an integral? Yes. Is it, okay, so yes, Tanzu does more than that beyond that. Exactly, yes. It, it, it's another one component of the whole Tanzu offering where Got you it. have much more, compo more components like Tanzu data services, monitoring services, Spring, uh, and while uh, a huge offering for 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 the cloud landscape. All yes. right. It doesn't matter what um, like what language I'm using when I if I use this uh, Tanzu hmm. application catalog. Yes. Yeah. So th there will be you'll have components adapted to your needs. Need. Yes. Uh, so I could write it in Java, C sharp. You mentioned Go. Uh, it doesn't really matter. That's that's irrelevant of using this tool, correct? Yes. It, it, exactly. You, in the end, you will you will say, okay, I need, you will need a cluster to run your applications on, so you have a, a, a Tanzu Kubernetes grid. You will need, uh, yeah, components. This this um, uh, this pieces that you need to 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 run your applications, like for example, the database or a cache or others. Do you have it as well? Do you have all the monitoring stack as well? So that is it completes your whole uh, experience with working with. This kind of environments. Got it. Can you can you walk me through uh, a bit of the developer experience? If I'm using Tanzu application catalog, what what as a developer do I need to do? Do I add some dependencies? Do I write some code? Is it a configuration? How does that work? So, uh, I'd say right now, for when you work with Tanzu application catalog, that the first that the I th I think that the first person to work with will be the the application the platform. Uh, operator, which will, which will define which applications you want to be available to your, for your team. So the, in the end, you will have like yeah, 200 applications to choose from, and you will say that you will build your own catalog. So you will say, okay, I, I, my developers need Postgres, Redis, Mongo, um, I don't know, for example, Apache Airflow and Harbor. There are some sample applications. To, uh, this person will go through the list of applications. I will say, okay, I want this application from the dynamic catalog. I want them in my uh, in my own catalog. Then it will also need to select which operating system they want this application to run to run on. For example, if a, if a, if a company needs to work with Red Hat Nine, yes, it will say, okay, Red Hat Nine or Ubuntu twenty two. They will say, okay, my, this catalog needs to be in Red Hat 9. Also, they can provide their custom version of Red Hat 9 with, for example, all, all their the restrictions for the system applies. So you can just provide this uh, a base image. Once they have that, they will need to select a target uh, repository where all those applications will be available. And what, once the, the, all, the, all this, uh, this wizard, is is done, then the system will automatically push in your target repository all the applications the developers need. Then this operator will just uh, pass all the information to the to their devs. And now their devs is they will have like in Docker Hub, for example, something similar. They will have the list of applications they can just use. So in the end, it will just be they will just uh, start deploying using their their own company repository as the as the source. It's just that. So in the end, it's it's, it's selecting what 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 applications you want in which operating system you want them to be running on, and just a target repository to to have them pushed. And then it, then it, the developer experience will just be similar to using another uh, another distribution platform like Docker, Hub, Quay, or or the like. 
it will be just they will have their their applications uh, deployed and they will the 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 platform operator will <laughs> be very uh, we don't have to worry about the this provenance of this of uh, this application. They will know that they are using uh, their own validated repository with their own uh, with their own restrictions and constraints. So, and then they will also have control over what's being deployed. So that's the, the idea. Okay. Got it. So there's, there's two pieces to this. There's one, the folks that are pushing something to the target repository, and then the developers, they're going to use that as part of their applications to free them from yes. uh, concerns about you know, security. Exactly. In the, in the end, it's trying to match these both necessities. It's to make developers happy, and as I said before, developers happy and platform operators happy. So Everybody's happy. I love it. Yeah, everybody's <laughs> so what, happy. What are we pushing to the repository? Is, it, is this a YAML file that we're pushing, the, or what's the... Uh, they're pushing container images, images, okay. and they're pushing uh, Helm charts. It's Got using it. OCI format. So yeah, when when you want to deploy into pro, uh, in Kubernetes in production, you will uh, you will use a Helm chart, which is um, I don't know if you've worked with Helm before. A little bit. Yeah, in the end, it's like to pa uh, a way to package a full yeah. application into for Kubernetes. So right. you will got all these Kubernetes objects like pods, uh, stateful sets, services, uh, et cetera, and they will all get deployed uh, into, into your cluster. So yeah, we will, we will provide these YAML files that with all along with this documentation so they can perform their, their adaptation to their needs. And also this both container and health chart will, will already will be happy made following their uh, the security checklist, like for example, uh, the the DSA checklist, checklist. There's a lot of uh, Kubernetes security checklists that we've <laughs> gone through and try to implement everything. So when they run some for some validation, cluster validation tools, like for example, Kubescape or Kubepage, they can see that their applications are configured with the with the with the essential security features. Got it. So, so it uh, sounds like everything that you're going to do with this application catalog is going to be done through containers and through Kubernetes. That's, that's well, my I, assumption. Not exactly. Though we also provide uh, the the option for OVAs. So OVAs is use, uh, vir virtual machines. So this okay. virtual machine images that you can deploy in yeah, in, a, in a virtualized environment, like in the in okay. I don't know, for example, in in Azure sure. as an instance or if you have your own uh, visualization uh, cloud, like, oh, and like an open stack or similar, you can use that as well. Or in vSphere, uh, it's another well-known VM per product. You can, you can, there are other users that don't use Kubernetes and they use more uh, virtual images and virtual instances. We also have a friend for that. So the Trans Application Catalog, you can use uh, OVAs if Kubernetes is not a platform you're currently using. So yeah, we, we try to, to cover the, the mayor <laughs> landscape, but it's to that I also, I told more about Kubernetes because it's my main area of expertise. Oh, I see. And it's the it's about I've worked more most on, but we as just like in the old times, we want to target as many uh, possible uh, deployment platforms as possible. Mm -hmm. uh, is there anything we haven't covered on this topic that you feel is critical for people to know? Uh, yes, of course. That for example. I know that in terms of, I'd say that currently a lot of developers, a lot of platform operators are, are very uh, interested in, in vulnerabilities in images that mm -hmm. right now, uh, it scanners like Trivi, like uh, a Sif or, or a Gripe, it's something that it's important. They want the software to have as, as the least, uh, uh, vulnerabilities as possible. Of course. I don't, know if you, I don't know if you ever run these kind of tools that you get a list that is sometimes terrifying, like, oh, no, <laughs> this, this, this container image is like 10 sure. critical. Especially critical. if you have a lot of open source projects where you, you, you've yeah. kind of surrendered control of parts of your application to strangers. Yeah, yeah exactly. It's, it's sometimes a, uh, and it, it's a difficult thing because yeah. it's sometimes as a user, you get this list, but 
you no matter you don't know how to interpret that list, you see that that there is a critical vulnerability. But is it something that actually affects my application? Mm. That's something that the African developers have to acknowledge. So, so prioritize that list is a challenge. Yeah. So which we also work on, for example, uh, analyzing these vulnerabilities and uh, together with the applications and together with the software of materials and other elements are important. We also, uh, we've done a bonnet, what is known as a BETS document, vulnerability exchange document, where we analyze and we say which of these vulnerabilities that you may see uh, are actually affecting the application. And that's something oh. that you should concern about. So in the end, for example, you may see the yeah there are five critical uh, vulnerabilities, but after applying these uh, best documents, you start actually zero, so you can you know that you saw that your application is safe. And also, uh, we together to try to minimize and go to near to zero CVEs and try to 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 minimize as much as possible. We also have our own operating distribution operating system, which is called Photon OS, which is part of our Tons to commercial offering that is actually a lean image aimed for minimizing as many vulnerabilities as possible. We always uh, fit as many vulnerabilities that are available in their upstream project and upstream operating system in all of our flavors. But it's true that in the case of Photon, as it's an in house project, we also put a lot of effort on minimizing as much as possible. Because in the case of, for example, say... Debian. Okay, go ahead, sorry. Because... <laughs> No, because in the case of, for example, Debian, we don't own the Debian project or we don't own Ubuntu, we don't own Red Hat. So there's not much that at some point, there's not much that we can do. We need to rely on them. But in the case of Photon, as it's an in-house project, that's, we have full control over it and, we can, and we've done a lot of effort to, to minimize the CVEs, the what is known with vulnerabilities. So we encourage users to also to take a look and, and see that if they are, if it's, uh, if it's something that they want, they're really concerned and they want to find the, the distance with the, as least vulnerability as possible, we recommend to take a look at Photon as part of our commercial offering of Tons Application Catalog. Excellent. Um, where can people go to learn more, people that are just getting started, like me? <laughs> novices well i think that's yeah they can go to the to tans uh tans young word tans i think it's called yeah tans application uh yeah tansu.vmware.com they can go right there to tansu.vmware.com yeah they can they can go there and, and learn about all our, our offering or commercial offering and they can go to bitnami.com to learn more about our open source offering and they can they can browse the whole catalog, and of course uh, we well something that we are we we uh, strive to is to provide as much not only commercial support of course as taking for granted that we we'll we have high priority support and in the commercial offering but also in our open source community we are uh, with we even though with a best effort approach we are actively working with the community and. They can reach us for any questions and any possible improvements. Our, our products are, have a, apart from us, in you know, open source or open source offering, apart from us, there's a lot of people from the community contributing to it, which we verify. And, and it's a pleasure to just get a lot of users and sharing their experiences that with, with the, the sharing their issues and try to find solutions for them. That's something that you will find. So yeah, if you go also to our GitHub, dot com slash binami you, you can uh reach us as well i'm going to all these sites as you say them <laughs> uh excellent javier i learned a lot today thank you so much thank you my pleasure when i was a, a little kid one of my first friends was actually technology. That was part of uh, when I was a little, I will, will use technology every day and this will shape the person that I am now. The curiosity, the, the, the need to explore new things, to communicate as well with my friends as well. So yeah, I'm so grateful to technology as one of my first friends ever. <laughs>